Hello, my name is Anish Bhandari, and I'll be presenting on the imaging characteristics of hyperostosis frontalis interna. So hyperostosis frontalis interna, otherwise known as HFI, is a benign overgrowth of the frontal bone that's reported in about 5 to 12% of the population and is much more common in elderly females. There is a paucity of literature on the imaging appearance of HFI, particularly in MRI, and the current literature is more so focused on cadaver studies. So the purpose of this project will be to describe the baseline imaging characteristics of HFI on MRI. And the reason we want to do this is because it may be beneficial for future oncologic workup, especially in the evaluation of cover metastatic disease, because it can be very difficult to distinguish between the two, and there's not too much established literature on what HFI can look like on MRI. This is an IRB-approved retrospective study, and we included studies with both CT head and contrast-enhanced MRI so that we could compare the two, and we excluded all patients that are 18 years old or younger or anyone with any bony disorders that affect the endocrine bone, such as Paget's disease. Uh, the, this is our demographics and CT data. We, uh, our MRI data involved pre-T1 images, post-T1, post-contrast-enhanced T1 images, both using MP rage and spin echo sequences, as well as fat-saturated T2 images. This is the Herskovitz classification. The, this is the baseline way that HFI is classified based on its percentage of frontal bone involvement and was one of the ways in which we classify the data. And this is the example of our grading system for the pre-T1 images. And so we used a subjective scale um, as well as a quantitative measurement of the signal intensities. And this is our subjective scale for the pre-T1 images showing heterogeneously hyperintense hyperostosis frontalis, homogeneously hyperintense, heterogeneously hypointense, and homogeneously hypointense. And we did a, another subjective scale for the post-contrast enhanced T1 images, where there is no enhancement, focal enhancement, diffuse enhancement, or just inner table linear enhancement. And then for the T2 grading system, we graded it by isointense, hypointense, or hyperintense. And for our subject characteristics, we had 77 patients. And as we know, HFI is much more common in females. So about 83% of our patients were female. And now going on to what we found for the pre-T1 images, we found that none of the clinical factors correlated with signal intensity on pre-T1. And areas of intrinsic T1 shortening or T1 hyperintensity correlated with areas of low Hounds fields on CT, which we expect for fatty marrow. And regions of HFI were not different from the normal occipital bone signal intensity, but a higher Herskowitz classification or a higher percentage of HFI involving the frontal bone was associated with increased heterogeneous signal on the pre-T1 images. And for our post-contrast T1 images, we found that HFI can demonstrate many different enhancement patterns, and these areas of fatty marrow versus sclerotic bone were more likely to demonstrate enhancement. As you can see below, the areas of enhancement are more so correlating with areas of fatty marrow. And when enhancement was present, it, it was uh, statistically similar on um, whether it was MP rage or spin echo sequences. And for our T2 data, we found that focal areas of enhancement were more likely to demonstrate T2 hyperintense signal. And these regions of enhancement demonstrating T2 hyperintense signal were more likely to have underlying fatty bone marrow, which kind of correlates what we're seeing with the T1 images. And so overall, we saw that on the pre-T1 images, there's a lot of varying appearance and no difference in quantitative signal between HFI and normal bone. But on the post-contrast T1-weighted images and T2-weighted images, we found that these areas of enhancement were more likely to be present with fatty bone marrow, and there's many different types of enhancement patterns, which may be important going forward, knowing how to differentiate between HFI and a metastatic lesion and be more helpful to better understand what it may look like. And so in the future, it'd be better to further delineate the frequency of these different enhancement patterns and find correlations between these enhancement patterns and a benign versus a metastatic lesion, which would be very helpful for future oncological workup. Here are my references, and thank you.